Thanks. Let's bring in West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito. She's one of the Republican lawmakers meeting with President Biden later this week to talk about just that infrastructure. Senator, uh, good afternoon to you. Welcome. Thanks for being here. We all watch this as Americans and we see the real world consequences of what is happening with these gas uh, price spikes. We're seeing uh, gas drying up in some areas of the country. So as someone who will be in the room, what is the GOP plan to stop something like this from happening again? Well, first of all, the first thing we're going to talk about is narrowing the focus to physical infrastructure, which, of course, pipelines are. And so I think that this, this incident is so uh, emblematic, I think, of what the future could look like through malware and other ways to really disrupt our, our flow both of water or gas or other, our power distribution. So I think that this is a topic that we'll probably discuss with the president on Thursday and that we should look at. We have funded uh, some of the investigated agencies on the cybersecurity side. But we probably need to get more granular with this now that we see what's happened with the pipeline. Uh, Senator, the Wall Street Journal editorial board writing this morning, the real right. infrastructure problem, the colonial pipeline shutdown is a warning of worse to come. That is the fear of the American people when we saw what happened, Senator. The board writes defending the U.S. against cyber attacks is the Biden administration's most important infrastructure job. But that's not what its $2.3 trillion proposal would do. Have you seen anything from this administration that would combat this when we're talking about a, a $2.3 trillion price tag? Well, a lot of the $2.3 trillion price tag is not that physical infrastructure piece and certainly doesn't have the possibility of cybersecurity attacks contained within that. So I think we got to prioritize this. I think this should be, we did this in the water bill that we passed two weeks ago, because remember there was a there was a, an incident in Florida where somebody tried to get into the water system uh, to taint it. Uh, and, and so we know that we put more cybersecurity money into our water systems in that bill. We need to do the same for all of our transportation and infrastructure packages but the administration has got to come off of the fact that um, that it, it, that uh, infrastructure is home health aids and Medicaid expansion and things of that nature those discussions are for another day this is core infrastructure this is powering America this is jobs this is all the a core uh, and to keep this safe yeah. uh, we're gonna need to invest really important to get your voice on that as your voice will be in the room with President Biden uh, uh, six GOP senators uh, from John Barrasso Roy Blunt Mike Crapo, Pat Toomey, Roger Wicker. Um, so we look forward to following up with you on that meeting happening Thursday. Senator, I want to ask you about what you are calling Democrats' election power grab when it comes to this S-1 bill. You say it is not for the people. Here's why you write. Democrats say this is to get more people to vote. And in this piece, you say everyone wants more people to vote, Democrats and Republican. So what is this legislation really about, Senator? It really is a power grab of the federal government taking over our state election systems. The beauty of the 2020 election under a pandemic is that we had more people voting than ever in our history uh, in, in some cases. And the reason that was is because our states responded to the unique situations that they found themselves in, whether it was expanding you know, mail-in votes or absentee votes or however they did it. And we need to preserve our state's rights to be able to make those decisions. One thing this bill does that if for my state of West Virginia is we have e-voting for our military who are deployed overseas and for our folks with disabilities. They can vote um, electronically. This disallows that. Now, why in the world would we disenfranchise our military voters who are deployed and people with disabilities who have difficulty getting to the polls? So it just shows you it's a one-size-fits-all federal power grab. They politicize the FEC. They cannot possibly tell me they think that's a good idea if, if the Republicans were in charge. So I, I think it's very transparent what's going on. Here. Senator, as you just mentioned, we had more people vote than ever before in the last election. So why is this even needed? Well, I mean, I pointed that out in my first statement. I said, you know, are we in search of a problem that doesn't really exist? When you look at the way uh, our, um, our our votes came in this last time with 17 million more people voting than ever before, the highest numbers since 1900 percentage wise in every category of voter. So I, I, I think that uh, they've been wanting to do this for years, as Leader McCall said. This is a this is their opportunity. But to me, it, it's just, you know, they get rid of voter ID laws, which are very popular. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I think that um, 
it's a it's it's a way for them to be able to control them uh, control not just the discussion but also the the houses of government for the next several years. Well, Senator, we look forward to hearing back from you after your meeting Thursday on infrastructure with the Sounds Biden good. administration with the president himself. Uh, please come back soon. Thank you. We'll do. Thank you.